maybe you haven't heard of Steve lately. He doesn't, he's very busy, doesn't spend a lot of time online, hasn't gone to even some of the shows. It's been a while since I even saw you at the shows and certainly on social media. And I've even given him grief about his website not updated. So this is important to know. He's just too busy right now to do a lot of those things, which is a good sign. Uh, but to that end, there are a lot of new things, even if you are a frequent user in the past of Steve's stuff that maybe you're not aware of. And I think it might be a good time to talk about your gravity-based mod, which has kind of trumped some of your other things as well as yeah. what's coming yeah. on the agenda. Yeah, that's relatively recent. Um, again, I'm terrible on dates and timelines, but we've, we've been doing that for a year or a little more than a year now, I guess, something like that. Um, this was one of those things that was kind of, you know, an idea that was floating around in my head for a long time, which was uh, uh, improving the chassis, you know, um, coming up with um, uh, ways, you know, more ways to uh, control vibrational energy, to uh, remove more and more vibrational energy from the equation so that the components you've got, the circuitry is allowed to do its thing uh, to the best of its ability without, you know, interference from various kinds of noise pollution. And that includes AC line stuff. So, you know, we haven't really talked about that, but I, I spent quite a bit of time developing a, an extremely high performance and very expensive, admittedly, um, AC power distribution and ground enhancing device called the AC Nexus. Um, and that was because I recognized that everything you do to improve the quality of the power getting to your gear is a fundamental improvement in, in performance, in, in how you hear the music, letting you hear more and more clearly what the equipment is capable of. And those are very fundamental things that you really have to take care of before you're gonna know what your equipment is really capable of. Well then that, you know, I had been playing around with different chassis materials and things for quite a long time. A lot of that done in the preamplifier, the VRE1. Um, but I became interested um, in, you know, in um, moving forward with this because of work I was doing with Rick Brown. He is an exclusive distributor for burning. Certain burning amplifier uh, products are, are made for Rick. They're um, the 845 uh, monoblocks uh, from burning are, you know, that's a product that's his exclusively. And he's, you know, he's one of the, um, the, the top go-to people for burning uh, amplifiers. Well, I got involved with him now going back a number of years and he asked for some help doing some um excuse me uh th there were they, they needed to do a, some uh, parts in upgrades um uh that david burning had recommended and rick asked for my help so you know i got in there and took the amps apart and did these changes and and i said huh you know might I suggest that there's a few other things that, uh, that could be done to possibly improve things here. Um, and it was also true at the time, uh, David's uh, designs, all of these amplifiers are based on his own switch mode power supply system. And so there's no big transformer in there and the whole thing's fairly lightweight. And in fact, um, it was really a very lightweight aluminum you know, assembly and so I, I suggested to Rick that, you know, the performance of the amplifier could really be improved if we um, gave it a more substantial base, you know, added some gravitas to the, the chassis mechanics. Um, and it just so happened that because of the way David had designed the chassis, there was an external flat aluminum base plate that simply came off. Just the nine screws held it in place and it had the feet attached to it. You take it off to get access to the interior of the amplifier to do certain kinds of you know, work if need be. Well, okay, then that was a perfect opportunity to make an external added base. So the first ones I did were stainless steel, <clears throat> um, but then uh, I felt that brass would be a better material and indeed it turned out to be. Um, and so now all of those amplifiers are 
now sent you, you that's the way they come now you if you're a owner of an earlier burning quad z amplifier or the 845 model blocks before this change happened this is uh, something you can add on to those amplifiers and it dramatically in, enhances performance it's amazing and i mean it's it's a real head spinner to hear what that does for the already an already very good amplifier right uh, they, they were highly a, regarded already pretty yes good. and it takes an, an incredible leap in performance when you put add the gravity base okay so i said all right fine um that you know that was an eye opener it's like i knew it was going to be better but you never know until you do that thing just what that really means and what it comes down to and so i said well you know all right i gotta i gotta try that on my gear um and so i gotta say even with solid state stuff the results have been similarly dramatic that adding the the gravity based system to the amps and preamps is the the single biggest step change in performance of anything that i've ever done um all the other things have are cumulative and they they add up to greatly enhance performance but as a kind of a single step item the gravity base is a bigger change than anything else um now, unfortunately, these are not things that, they're not like an add-on accessory. Uh, these are custom designed for each piece of equipment and they are they become part of the chassis. The whole piece has to be disassembled and everything put back together that bonds the, um, the gravity base to the chassis. Um, this is, you know, it's normally done as part of an up, upgrade work, but certainly some people, have sent even relatively recent upgrades back in to have this done to them uh, because we feel so strongly about you know the performance enhancement and everybody has just absolutely loved the result so yeah that's been um, that's been a relatively big change and i've I've now developed the gravity bases for really just about every piece of equipment um, just about everything that i do uh we even had we're right now i mean this is uh hap this is being just finished right now someone sent back a line drive you know uh from late 80s purely passive preamp this uh, was a deluxe version that already had the uh, penny and giles uh, conductive plastic volume control which i i love as a potentiometer uh but uh he sent that back in and said go to town um he wanted it simplified it's just it's just input selection and volume control that's it um and again purely passive but best of everything so he got a gravity base on that completely refinished chassis all new faceplate uh and a gravity top <laughs> added uh, to it as well and uh it, it's uh it's beautiful looking i I'll, I'll provide you with some uh some photos that you can add to the to the video but it turned out beautifully um so very happy about that yeah i think it's important to note that even the chassis before my modifications and some of the more exotic things you've done you always did have um the option to have a, a graphite based uh top i know the one i have is still oh the carbon fiber yeah, carbon fiber i'm sorry yeah, yeah. This, is, this is the still the stock one but you'd always had that I just have never gotten that actual mod yet, but uh, to the level of basically options you had were almost limitless, other than keeping the heat sink and the general frame. Yeah, right. Uh, and it's come down to where uh, when when we do you know some of the more extensive uh, rework, uh, more there's more people asking for sort of the best of everything, and so at, at that point there's. There's really not much remaining of the original. There's chassis and heat sinks, and that's about it. Um, now, as you know, I've just um, done the developmental work on an all new chassis, um, started from scratch. Uh, and that was, again, it's something I've been thinking about for a long time. I've wanted to do for a long time, but I've been you know, so busy with other things, it wasn't really a pressing issue. But I finally had a client um, come to me and say, and this is someone who already had 
very heavily reworked, very high level upgrade for a pair of DNA 0.5 model blocks. So much like what you have there, but in as the DNA 0.5s. And he just, he said, you know, these are great. I love them. He has also, he's got a VRE1C preamp. You know, no complaints, fabulous, love everything. What else can we do? Um, and so uh, I love those kind of guys. God bless them. <laughs> uh, so I said, well, you know, when it comes to your amplifiers, um, really, there's, there really isn't much of anything I can do um, until we like start over again from scratch. So he said, okay, let's, let's do that. Um, so you've seen now the pictures of the metalwork for that. Yeah. Um, what you haven't seen are the external power supplies. In this, in this case, it's actually going to be a four-piece system. Yeah, so you got the you know monoblock amplifiers and external power supplies for each, uh, which is, I mean, in this case, it really is the transformer in an external box, a chassis system, with um, umbilical cables going from that to the to the amp chassis. Um, but I will now make this new design available. Um, as a, you know, a, a typical stereo amplifier with the transformer inside um, and monoblock versions of that as well. Um, however, now I have to, to you know, I'm going to have to be using transformers other than Plytron, uh, which I'm sorry about. It's not, it's not that huge of a deal from a purely performance standpoint. I have other very good transformers. I'm not concerned about that, but I have, I've been doing business with Plytron for a long time, since McCormick Audio days, right. and always felt that they were making the best poor auto power transformers that I had found. And, you know, there were things I liked about that. So anyway, sorry to see him gone. Yeah, I think uh, just to interject my history with Steve, I mean, I had a much tighter budget, um, especially when I first bought his amps, and that's why I bought them, because they were such high rated at the time I, w I wasn't going to shows back in the early 90s and stuff so i wasn't hearing stuff for myself i had to rely on online reviews and stereophile and i was so happy with uh, the performance of the stock dna's back then but even as i learned about the mods i was kind of a skeptic at first and i was always like you know if it's not in the signal path a lot of times i'd send amps back to steve and kind of nix any of the, <laughs> the mods that he had that weren't really in the signal path like standoffs or anything that really I just focus on my money on those things and it always came back wonderful but now that i've ventured out and now my monoblocks are kind of for me my cost no object certainly not to the level of what this guy's talking about but um yeah it's phenomenal i didn't talk too much about the performance in my last video but yeah it's just the overwhelming compliment the compliment of Finesse and power and control is what I would say is the best part of these amps that I really, I have a, a digital amp from Emotivo, great amp, you know, 500 watts per channel, perfectly fine, especially at the budget, I, I would have no problem recommending it to people, but when I swapped it out for these monoblocks, it was just clear the level of finesse and control both improved, and so, yeah, I'm a believer now in a lot of the things he's doing that even aren't quote, in the signal path, and I was a skeptic at first, but now, yeah, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on board. <laughs> well, good. It turns out almost everything in there is in the signal path <laughs> one way or another. 